Srimad Bhagavatam as an ontological work, a work of ontology. And we view Nectar of Devotion as an analysis of that ontology. Okay? That helps us understand it. In Srimad Bhagavatam, the ontology is embedded in the stories. But Nectar of Devotion makes it explicit. And you can actually diagram out the Nectar of Devotion. And I've done this. And it's on my Transontology site. And also, I think there's an article or some uh, introductory uh, material on, on Transontology on our regular site. So you should learn this because this is really, if, if there's anything that we have that's unique and special, it's this understanding of the scriptures as ontological works. Huh? Because ontology is what gives you meaning and value. Uh, what's important and what's not important? Just like if someone is uh, very important to you, you say, uh, you mean a lot to me. You see? You mean a lot to me. You have a lot of value. See, our relationship is very valuable to me. You mean a lot. It has a lot of meaning. Uh, really means a lot. So how do we know what's more valuable and what's less valuable? By its meaning. And where does meaning come from? It comes from ontology. Ontology is the background knowledge that determines meaning. Okay, don't be scared by this word. It's just a word. You can look it up in a dictionary. You can look it up online. There's plenty of good explanations of the actual meaning of ontology. Ontology is what gives meaning its meaning. Okay? Ontology is, well, you can, there is a way to diagram, like, mathematically, uh, different ontologies. But an ontology, in our experience, is usually a collection of stories. And that's exactly what the Vedic literatures are. Vedic literature is story after story after story. This happened, and that happened, and this guy did this, and then this happened, and then so-and-so said that, and then like that. And these stories, taken all together, paint a coherent picture of our world and our experience. They give a map of reality, a map of consciousness and experience that allows us to determine the value of different experiences, and especially spiritual experiences, especially different states of consciousness and like that. So ontology is very, very important. And if you're not aware of your ontology, if, you're not, if you do not have a conscious, consciously constructed ontology, then you're in trouble because you don't really know where your values come from. Uh, you don't really understand how you uh, arrive at your conclusions and your judgments about what's important, about what has value, about what has meaning. Where do your values come from? Uh, nobody just picks them out of thin air. We get them from some cultural background or some uh, experiential background, often from our parents, our friends, our school, our life experience, and like that. But these different sources are all incompatible, and they give us conflicting ideas, conflicting values. Makes it hard for us to know what's what, or to make up our mind about things. So the Vedic literature gives a completely self-consistent set of values, a self-consistent ontology. And this is extremely valuable because the Vedas ontology is based on consciousness. What is the highest value of consciousness? And as we just, dis just uh, discovered in Nectar of Devotion, it is spontaneous, intense love for the Supreme Personality of Godhead. This experience, this consciousness, 
is the most valuable thing in existence. It's worth dedicating our entire life energy, our entire life time, to cultivating this experience. Not any other. Not some impersonal realization of spiritual light, although we, we may pass by that stage, that may be uh, uh, a marker on the path, but our goal, our path, our uh, values are oriented towards this personal realization, uh, this personal love between the soul and the super soul. So what does that look like? See, what are the different stages of it? How does it develop? What processes can we use to encourage it? How do we, how do we get started? Then what happens? What, how do we go to these different stages beyond and next, 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 until we reach the perfection? See? This is a road that very few of us have walked all the way to its end. Huh? And the main problem, why, is values. For example, my God brothers, they started to value the external process of religion more than the internal process of development of consciousness. And because of that, they stopped advancing in consciousness and they became stuck at a certain level. Others value the uh, ability to convince others to become their followers so much that they get stuck at the impersonal level and so they start saying things like you are God you know because this sounds very attractive to ignorant people who want to be cheated uh, the cheaters and the cheated see I want to cheat others I have this desire to cheat others so if I'm God see then I can cheat anybody right <laughs> so I'll be attracted towards a teaching that will justify this and I'll try to learn. Just like, you know, uh, if you go to prison, you'll see the young prisoners are always hanging out with the older prisoners and trying to learn like different con games and stuff like this. Huh? Why? Because when they get out, then they want to be, they want to, you know, they want to get promoted to a higher level of criminal. Huh? Is that, that great line from that uh, Batman movie? What this town needs is a better class of criminal. <laughs> <laughs> so the criminals, they're taking association from the more advanced criminals. Uh, the lawyers are taking uh, association from the more advanced lawyers. Not a whole lot of difference there. Uh, the doctors, they hang out with more advanced doctors. The lawyers, the mechanics, uh, the musicians, everybody who wants to learn a skill. They hang out with people who are more advanced. So we want to hang out with Rupa Goswami because Rupa Goswami got these instructions on how to cultivate consciousness directly from Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. And, and the, the other, even the other lineages of Vaishnavas don't have such advanced knowledge. If you talk to the Madhva people or you talk to the Ramanuja people, they're very nice Vaishnavas. They follow so many principles of bhakti and so on like that. They don't have this advanced knowledge of rasa tattva. They don't have the knowledge of, of how to become situated in conjugal love, especially. That is exclusive to the lineage of Lord Chaitanya. So we're very, very fortunate to be in this lineage of Lord Chaitanya because these instructions given in Nectar of Devotion specifically can help us uh, become elevated to the highest platform of devotional service and conjugal love. And why is this important? Because this type of devotional service pleases Krishna more than any other. And because it pleases Krishna more, guess what? It pleases us more too. It's more satisfying to be situated on the, the uh, platform of pure devotional service than it is to be situated on the platform of mixed devotional service. 
it's more pleasing to be situated in mixed devotional service than it is to be situated in impersonalism. It's more pleasing to be situated in impersonalism than it is to be situated in materialism. But above all of these categories, it's most pleasing to be situated in the conjugal love of the Lord. Huh? That's why it's called Madhurya Rasa. Sweet. It's very, very sweet. So if you take this advice, if you take this instruction, if you take these values, and you start making your choices in life according to these values, then over time, over years of time, I mean, you know, we're going to be alive in some form or other, eternally. What are we going to do with our eternity? What, which direction are we going to go? What meaning are we going to assign to our existence, to our experience? It depends on our ontology.